a realistic painting of my daughter Melody by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you my Mother's Day gift to myself, which is a painting of this little girl. And it's a painting of her right after she got out of a shower when she's all wrapped up in a towel and I'm laying her down and drying her off and she's got wet hair and the little drips on her nose. And that is my absolute favorite time with her because she's so warm and cuddly and calm. <laughs> and not doing stuff like this, which is fun, but there's just that brief little moment right after she gets out of a shower where she's all sweet and cuddly. So I absolutely love that moment, which is why I decided to paint this. I hope you guys like this painting as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I started out the painting with a background of pale pink, and just so you guys know, the actual recording of this, like the video angle and everything, it's a little bit better in a moment. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to set up when I was painting this because it's a little bit bigger than I usually work on when I'm working on something and it's flat and it was just kind of a different size so I was figuring that out as I went along but I got the background done with a coat of pink and then I went through and I blended in some white and some black for highlights and shadows just very soft little blanket shadows um, whenever I finish whenever I'm drying Melody off I lay her down on the bed so a little bit of a comforter and then I'm going to take and I'm going to start painting her towel section by section with one coat of a really nice eggplant purple and then after I have the first coat of that purple down then I went through and I added a second coat to each section and blending in white and black for shadows and highlights when you are shadowing and highlighting the towel make it slightly darker than you want the finished result to be so my towels are all really dark purple and they so you want it to be darker than what the actual towel is because when you start adding the texture on top of it it will brighten and lighten the whole thing so just kind of keep that in the back of your head as you are painting it so I did back and forth I did one section and then I went through and I worked kind of here and there all over so I wasn't working on two sections of the towel that are right next to each other and I'm making sure I work around her little fingers and when I was sketching this painting I went through and I did it with a grid so I had I printed off a image of her and then I made a grid across the picture and then I made a grid across my canvas and I was able to kind of use that to help me sketch and keep everything proportionate. I'm not very confident when it comes to painting people. It's not one of the things that I do frequently so I was like you know what I need some some extra guidelines as I'm working on this. So I did it if you look at I don't know if you guys could see any of my little grid across it but I had definite little little grid marks but then I'm going to take and I used three different colors of purple so I had two or I had three jars lined up and I put my that original eggplant color I poured some into each and then I added one drop of white to one jar two drops to the next jar and three drops of white to the third jar that way I had three different brightnesses of my purple and three different levels of that color so that I could very easily go through and add my towel texture across the whole towel and when I, when I was doing this I used teeny tiny little polka dots so I have a, a round brush that I'm using that comes to a very nice point and I use that and just add dot after dot after dot it's basically like pointillism if you guys um, are familiar with doing any pointillism I can remember back I was um, one of my high school art classes I had to do a pointillism project and it was on an eight and a half by 11 piece of printer paper is what we were told to use and it was with markers like a pack of sharpies and we had to make a still life when pointillism with sharpies on a piece of paper with no white left on the piece of paper do you guys have any idea how long it takes using little polka dots to fill in an eight and a half by 11 piece of printer paper with the end of a fine point sharpie that was my least favorite art project I think I've ever done in my life. It was torture. Just about my whole, my wrist got sore. My fingers were sore. The whole project was one of those things. And I, at that point I vowed, I'm like, I'm never doing pointillism again. That was the biggest pain in my butt I've ever dealt with. And now here I am filling in this towel with basically pointillism. But it was, I consider this to be for a good cause. So it was definitely worthwhile and it gave a beautiful towel texture that I think turned out really nicely. So same thing after you have all your towel filled in, then I'm going to start painting Melody. So I started out with her shoulder that is sticking out ever so slightly just between the two layers of the towel. Add a little shadow under her chin. Blend that in. You see just a little bit of her armpit sticking up there. Not too much detail is required for that back little corner. It's pretty shaded in and kind of just like a little, little peekaboo corner. Then I painted her wrist 
add some pretty heavy shadowing along the edges of her wrist so it looks like her arm is coming out of that blanket and then or towel I guess and then I'm going to be adding first coat of color over her hand after I have that I went through and I did each finger kind of on its own and I just slowly began to blend in the colors so I start out with just a layer of color over that bit of the back of her hand and I'm gonna start on her pinky and I used a little bit more of a red tone in her shadows of her skin than you may normally think. So I have some brown and some burgundy out as well as a very light cream color and then a few different shades that were close to her skin tone to mix and keep her skin nice and variegated and natural looking. But the reason that I use some more of that burgundy color in the shadows than you may normally think is that because she is just fresh out of the shower, I don't know if you guys, if this happens to you, but whenever I take a shower, my whole, I turn like bright red because the shower, the hot water just does that to me. Well, it makes her look a little bit extra burgundy. So there's a little bit more burgundy tone in her shadows. And I did that some on her face too when we get to that stage. But her hand definitely had some redness to it. And I don't think it's that the water's too hot. It's just that that kind of stuff makes us turn color. It's funny with me, like even if you put my your hand, if it's like on my leg and you pick your hand up, then I've got a red handprint on my leg for about five minutes. And Terrell thinks it's the weirdest thing because it looks like I've been slapped or something. And it's just that my skin is like, nope, I'm not going to tolerate that. So... Yeah, I guess Melody inherited that. She's lucky that way. But I'm going to continue adding that nice shadowing and highlighting. And I like to, I've always liked to do this. I like to use diluted layers of paint, almost more like an oil painting technique. And you can dilute them either with a mixative that you can get, or a lot of times I'll just use water. If it's subsequent layers of paint, you want one layer of paint on the bottom of the canvas to adhere it to the canvas that isn't diluted at all, that's full strength, that really helps keep everything nice and together. But on top of that, you can almost like, do watercolor techniques with acrylic paint if you dilute it, which I think is a lot of fun and is one of my favorite ways of painting. So that's what I did a lot, especially on her hand and some around her eyes too. But I'm going to take and I filled in her ear or her one of her ears and then the inside of her mouth. And she's got a nice big smile with five teeth. So it's funny, this picture was not taken very long ago. It was like I took the picture and then that same day I started painting it because I was like, you know what? I really feel like I need to do this. And she had five teeth, and now she's working on number seven and eight. She's getting so many teeth so quick. She's been kind of cranky recently because of it, too, which has been fun. But I can't blame her. She's getting so many teeth, and that can't be comfortable. So I'm, after I have her mouth done, I added just a little layer of color over her lips. I'll go back through now and add some more detail to those. But then I took, and I just kind of added a layer of the little flesh tone that I mixed for her around her mouth and I kind of did her chin and then I'm just going to kind of do section by section on her face. I'm going to fill in basically under her eyes kind of blending in color here and there as I go slowly beginning to find the different shapes in her face. So whenever I'm painting this is going to sound probably rather peculiar because it's a weird mind frame at least from people that I've talked to they're like that's how you think about it but when I'm thinking of painting and I'm adding shadows and highlights I'm actually thinking more like I'm sculpting and I'm like okay this part needs to go in and every time I have that thought then I add some more dark color dark tones to it and I'm like well this part needs to be built up a little bit needs to be a bit thicker then I add a little bit of light tones so I'm almost thinking more of things as I'm painting them as 3d and I guess I do a lot of 3d nail art so that's probably where it comes from and I also love to sculpt so I guess you know it's probably what it is that knowledge I have coming into play here but that's the mind frame that I have when I'm doing this stuff the other thing that I think is funny whenever I'm painting people which is rare mind you that I I also think of it I take my cosmetic knowledge into play because you know you there's all these rules with contouring lately which I don't adhere to but that does kind of go to show what you're doing when you're contouring is you're enhancing what is already there your shadows and your highlights and when you're painting that's you're adding the shadows and the highlights so you basically do exactly what you do when you're contouring same places get the same things now for her in this particular painting it's a little bit different because she does have wet skin she's got slightly different and more intense highlights than she would otherwise have but i added some more and i'm going to blend in color up into her hairline so that there isn't a weird transition between her hair where her hair kind of feathers out and where her head is because unlike an adult that has well, not all adults, not Terrell. He's balding. Don't, well, I know I say these things, but anyways, uh, not like most like me that, you know, I've got heavy hairline where you wouldn't see my scalp through my hair necessarily. Hers you do. So I wanted to make sure that I had some flesh tone down all the way there. And I'm going to be filling in her eyes with a nice chocolate brown, basically the same color as her hair. 
and then adding the pupil, adding a little bit of a shadow for her eyelashes, and then using my little diluted colors technique, I added shadows and highlights and eyelashes and all sorts of things. Just keep adding different details, making sure she's got everything she needs for her eyes to make them sparkle. And keep adding little details. The great thing with the technique that I mentioned with the diluting the paint to get the colors to almost act like watercolor is that you don't really have to worry so much about things drying before you're ready. If you're going to be blending in all of your shadows and your highlights with acrylic paint prior to the paint drying, you may want to add in a mixative that slows down the drying process a little bit. Otherwise, you know, you might not be able to get there, especially if you're working on a bigger area and a bigger painting. A smaller painting, you're probably fine, but a bigger one, you may run into trouble that way. Adding her eyebrows. She has crazy eyebrows like I do. And then I'm going to be doing some more shadowing and some more highlighting, blending in with my fingers a little bit. Not your usual acrylic painting style, but I think my fingers actually do a really good job of blending in color here and there. So at the end here, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna finger paint because that sounds like fun. Adding some more shadows around her cheek there more highlights here and there, more shadows, more highlights. Just keep going through and touching anything up that you see. If you're looking at it, one thing that I always like to do when I'm working on a painting, and I definitely did with this one more than once, is I set the painting up away from me, like say eight, 10 feet, you know, eight to 10 feet, just away. And I'll turn around from it and I'll do something else. I'll check my email or look at my fingernails or whatever I'm doing. And I'll just give it like a minute and then I'll turn around and I'll look at it. And hopefully you'll be able to immediately see if something is wrong. You'll be able to just look at it and be like, you know what, this area here, something there doesn't look right. And then you can fix it. Whereas if you've been staring at a painting for two hours on end, you don't see these things as much. So sometimes taking a break and then just looking at it, even from, a, especially from a distance, it gives you a nice different perspective to check it out. So I hope you guys like this painting as much as I do. I had so much fun working on it. Please check out my Facebook and Instagram accounts to see more of my art and I will see you in my next video. Bye.